Today I want to tell you about my editing process. I'm writing a fantasy romance series and currently I've written 1000 pages. It's about three books roughly, but with editing it gets more, I guess. So I currently edit in my first book and I want to tell you about my stylistic ways to edit. Um, so first of all, when I finish the story and I for now I can see it the whole <laughs> so and um, I thought about world building and syst magic system that I have how the world was created and how was created specifically this land like and kingdom that, that I'm writing about and um, about political system who has the power and all of this things. When I was writing my first draft, I had this problem when uh, my characters has too much magical powers. But in my magic system, character have one and very, very rare two and more powers. And <laughs> when I was writing, like almost every character had like two and uh, three abilities, which is like not, it's not <laughs> my magic system. So I have to go back and edit that system. And it seems like in fantasy you can write whatever you want, but yes, you can, but you need to have limits. You can uh, imagine whatever you want, but you need to have an answer. Why the th uh, this things happen? Because you <laughs> have to really think about um, all these connections between magic powers and events that happening. It's very helpful to draw uh, any map that you can, so you can visualize your, I guess, place, a kingdom, a lens, that all these events happening, because it really, really helps. And you can see the connections between uh, the lens or like whatever <laughs> you're writing. So this was really helpful, the, uh, the creating the map. In my books, I wasn't using the standard mythology, so I was creating my new one, I tried to. And of course, it took a lot of time to come up with uh, names, um, abilities, and names of lands, and all of this connections between the magical abilities. And uh, I really like symbolism, that every detail has some secret behind it and the legend behind it, so I also I uh, was thinking about the backstory of abilities, how they <laughs> became real and all the things. And it, it was really fun, like exploring this fantasy world with <laughs> unlimited possibilities. And also in my books, I try not to use any name of brands or references to music, um, movies, TV series like modern culture or celebrities, like anything. <laughs> like that because it can be potentially a um, legal issue with that and I don't even want to learn what you can use and what you can so this is like not for me at all I never really understand this urge to use someone's work when uh, in my case like it's fantasy you can literally create whatever you want and there's like so many possibilities to do that so why? Why would you do that? It reminds me about a college when you need to write an essay and you have to put down some references to some literature and I never like to do that. Like, um, I was writing one essay in um, history, philosophy of art and I was writing <laughs> everything from my head like literally there was some topic and I just sit and wrote it like with no references and I put down there um, some poem that I wrote and <laughs> I remember teacher was asking what what is it and where where is it from well it's from my head you know so <laughs> yeah and um, actually I was reading about Cassandra Clare and um, she gets sued because she was using this uh, uh, term shadow hunter from the book series uh, and different author so th this is also such a big mess you can get into that but 
Yeah, I don't remember how it ended. I guess she won, something like that. So, yeah, like, no references and links in my book series. <laughs> Even I don't use a word alcohol. Like, I don't. <laughs> I use the nectar, so <laughs> figure it out. What is it? Also, in fantasy, there's some strange thing that I noticed that when author speaks about some characters and their vampires or fairy or shadow hunters, she uses the word human. Like, they're not human. But when some character thinking about something and trying to say something, he uses this word human. And in my book series, I try stop myself from using this word because I have characters and they are different race and they have name. So <laughs> I use this word instead, not human. So uh, currently I re I, I'm reading Frost by Crawford and she also uses this human <laughs> and Cassandra Clare also uh, used this word when uh, they were talking about shadow hunters and they were referring themselves to, to human, but they are not. So it's this such a weird moment, I guess. Maybe it's a mistake, maybe it's not, I don't know, but I try not to use this word at all. And in character appearance, I also try not to just say uh, this hair color or eyes. I try to create some image of the appearance, like my main character, Sarah, she um, um, reminds myself of Dawn. Uh, her hair looks like sand and her eyes look like sun and ocean. So like, I try to get some image and association behind this appearance. So this a little thing I use. It's also very helpful to have spreadsheet with information about character appearances and magical powers and relations between characters and um, this timeline, um, what's happening in every chapter. Because when you write a lot, and I was writing about 600 a page, and I start to forget what certain characters look like and especially when there are a lot of characters so you can really really forget and you need to go back and find this information so this is very helpful uh, thing to have like some spreadsheet where you can have all this uh, short information and when you write in a series uh, especially you need to think about how all these books connected especially titles <laughs> because um, book series uh, Throne of Glass all these books have don't really have connection between them so titles are random uh, but Akator has like some <laughs> one theme uh, so it, it's not really that important but I think um, it's a good thing it's a good thing to have you know some connection between books <laughs> in your book series so so in the beginning of writing my book, I very often use these short sentences in dialogues, like he smiled and then what he was saying, uh, or he frowned. And now when I'm editing, I try to expand this short sentence and it doesn't really get the atmosphere of what's happening in the scene. So I try to get more deep into his thoughts or maybe actions, what he's doing or thinking or reacting to something. So really think about that because I really hate these short sentences and I try to do something with them. And also I was reading about uh, that you shouldn't use the word sad. <laughs> and uh, when I was reading Kerry Maniscalco, um, Wicked Kingdom series and second book, she wasn't using this word at all. And I was so shocked because I didn't really notice that because uh, she used this long sentences where characters were thinking about something or doing something. And this is so much better than just use this said word. And I only use this 
uh, when I have a lot of characters and I need to show what exact character is saying something. But when there's only two characters, it's like, there's no point in that at all. And um, I actually was looking for this word in Sarah Mas books and she uses it. So I don't know, it's uh, your choice what you use, but I personally don't really like this word. So in my writing, I really like to use foreshadowing, like some small details in the first chapter gets revealed uh, later and have some big secret or legend behind it. Like I really love this small details like Sarah Mas uses, so I, I try to do the same and um, often I just, it just happens, I don't really try to do that, sometimes it just, it just happened <laughs> and so I really like this. And also it's very important not to spend way too much time on some details or sentences or even names because all these nuances, as a reader, I usually just skip the pages and I don't really notice these metaphors or really details of nature, something like that. So this can get you into, into this perfectionism loophole from you can really get out and just really learn to let the story go. At some point you have to let the story go and start a new one. And of course, in the first place, you choose this story that very close to your heart because you have to reread it and edit it a lot of times. And in my experience, um, when I read a book, like really good written book, and this like good world building and characters, it's just, I don't connect to the story. So there's no recipe for a, a good book that you can do the steps and you get this perfectly good book. No, because every reader is unique and every person has their own interest and what he likes. So personally, I like series by Sarah Maas. I like Throne of Glass. From the first page, I was in love with this series and I read all these eight books and um, Akatar. It gets a bit tricky because I like first book, but second, I had a lot of trouble, but when I was rereading it a couple of years later, I fell, fell in love. Maybe I was not a, in a good mood back then or something, I don't know, but now I love this. And this last series, uh, Crescent City, I I don't connect to that. Like, it's a really good writing, it's better writing than previous series, but something in the story is just not clicking for me. Maybe it's timing, maybe it's my mood, I don't know, but that's that's reality. So, and also you should never compare your work to a published book, because if you look at a lot of people who are working on that book, and it's just you who write in this first draft, like, so don't ever do that at all. And also, when you read these reviews about book, well, it's not always about writing skills of author. It's people, people have different opinions and they like different genres and have different moods. So it's not only a representation of your abilities. So keep that in mind and keep writing what you want, what you truly want and desire.